two degrees, there's snow everywhere, and that's what we're talking about in this episode. I think you're all gonna love it. Let's go. Snow, you either love it or you hate it. That's the unfortunate thing about snow is there's, there's people on both sides and, and both are very adamant that uh, snow is either the best thing on earth or snow is the worst thing on earth. I fall somewhere in between. I like it for a little bit, but after a while it needs to go. But I'm hoping in this episode, I'm gonna outline the three reasons why I love it and hopefully help uh, those of you out there that are gardeners love it more and also those that hate it, maybe hate it a little less. Because snow can be extremely beneficial for a gardener. And so that's why I'm gonna outline the three reasons why you should love snow if you're a gardener. Now I get there's a lot of people out there that can garden 365 days a year. I'm very jealous of you. But you know, snow does snow does a few things that you know you, you might be jealous of when you uh you know when you hear some of the benefits that snow has. So snow, not only does it come in the wintertime and it comes when everything's dead, but it comes when your trees are dormant. Okay. So this episode is going to pertain around dormancy because that's really where a lot of its benefits come in. So we're going to be standing here by our peach trees. We've got an Alberta peach and a Red Haven peach. And we have a lot of other deciduous fruit trees around. And I know a lot of times people, they, they come on us, they, they message us in the spring saying, you know, my trees didn't make it through winter. Why? The biggest reason why your trees don't make it through winter is because of a lack of snow, believe it or not. Snow does many things. It insulates, and that's the first thing it does, is it insulates. For every inch of snow, you're getting one R value. An R value is how much insulation, insulative properties you get. And that's, and basically, so for one inch of snow, you're getting one R value. And in your house, in your walls, you might put like an R15 or an R25. Okay, so for 12 inches of snow, you're getting the equivalent of a two by four with about three inches of fiberglass insulation. That's incredible for what snow can provide. And you might be wondering, why would you want to insulate? Because obviously in the house, you're insulating warmth. You're doing the exact same thing in the ground. So why would you want to insulate the ground? Because there's no warmth to really insulate. That's not really true. Warmth is the presence of heat. There's really no, I mean, there's really no cold. There's no such thing as cold. Cold is a lack of heat, okay? And the ground is a source of, of heat energy. Deep down, maybe two, three, four feet, there's, there's, thaw, there's thawed ground, okay? There is actual workable earth. Just because the top is frozen does not mean there's not a heat source down below. And so what you're doing is you're insulating the soil to prevent the, the cold weather from penetrating any further down. And how that applies to your fruit trees is your fruit trees, any deciduous tree that drops its leaves in the, in the fall and then comes back out of dormancy in the spring, sends its energy down to its roots. There's actually no life in these branches. It's a defense mechanism that the tree uses to prevent the cells from rupturing. Because when you put water into a pop can and throw it in the freezer, bad things happen, it explodes. The power of water is extremely, extremely powerful. And so what you can do, uh, well, what the tree does is the tree sends all of that, all of that, that life and all the energy down to its roots where it's thawed out. But what can happen is if you get really cold temperatures and you don't have any snow coverage, there's no insulation and that, that cold can penetrate deeper. And that's why your trees die, not because of the branches, but because of the, uh, but because of the cold. The next thing it does very well is that also because it insulates, it keeps your trees from, uh, from coming out of dormancy too soon. So I look like a crazy person and I've came out here and I've been, I've been shoveling snow and piling it up around the, the base of my trees here because of that insulative property. I want, I want, the, I want the, the base of the tree to stay insulated. Um, but also what I'm doing is I'm preventing the tree from coming out of dormancy too soon. Just like it keeps the soil uh, warmer in the winter, the same applies to the spring. When you have a really warm snap and it's you know unseasonably warm, just like it was last year, what can happen is your trees come out of dormancy too soon. And if they come out of dormancy too soon, they can die because then there's water or sap coming up into these branches 
And even if it stays, if it stays warm for too long, what can happen is then the branches will actually begin to flower and bud. And if the cold comes, what happens is it kills those and you can actually lose your tree that way or lose your, your fruit yields and set the tree back and you won't, you get, won't get much harvest. And I can see hundreds and hundreds of flower, uh, flower buds on this tree. It's gonna be an incredible year next year when it comes out of dormancy. So I wanna protect it. And so that, those are the two reasons why I love snow. And the next thing that I wanna point out is how we apply the snow. So when you apply snow to your fruit trees, you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure that you go out all the way out to the drip line. The drip line of the tree is to the farthest out branch. You'll have roots extending only about to the farthest out branch and that's where your drip line is for your tree. And so what you wanna do is make sure you have a really good bed of snow there that's going to insulate and protect it from coming out of dormancy too soon. So that's the first step. That's why I kind of look crazy. That's why I came out here today because we just got about eight to 10 inches of snow and I've been meaning to come out here to do this when we got our first heavy snow. So we got our first heavy snow and that's why I'm out here protecting all my fruit trees. So let's go over. I'm gonna start working on our other uh, apples and pears now. It's really cold. I'm gonna work on uh, getting those done while we talk about the third reason why I love snow. Whew. Oh, it's freezing. The next reason why I love snow is for the water that it provides. Snow is precipitation. It is frozen water. And in the spring, when it melts, you'll find that the amount of, the amount of groundwater you have is relative to the snowpack that you get. And many farmers have found that on average, if they get about 12 inches of snowpack, in a year, they'll have to water about 10% less. So that decrease in irrigation is, is, uh, means it saves them money, but it also means that they have to water less and their plants are less stressed because the plants use up the water down in the ground. It doesn't just keep going down further, it actually will come up eventually. When it, when it seeps down through the earth, it will eventually come back up. Uh, through the through the water table through capillary action and your plants will then use it so just because it works on a farm does not mean does not mean you can't apply it in your garden because of the same will apply now the next thing that i wanted to talk about the next thing i want to talk about with these trees here was you know when we pile up snow on our trees you might think it's kind of silly but it's actually not silly. Many orchards will actually drive plows down the lanes of their of their of, of their uh, trees, and they will pile up snow along the trunk for the exact same reason. And I take all of what we do based on kind of what professionals are doing and the reasons why they're doing them, because it's worthwhile for them, meaning it should be worthwhile for me too. And so a lot of our uh, we actually live in the, the cherry capital of the world and cherries are a big crop as well as um, peaches and as well as apples. We produce um, a substantial amount of the world's supply of apples as well. Uh, and so when it comes to apples and cherries, our growers around, uh, the farmers around here are very passionate about keeping their, their trees alive, obviously, because that's their livelihood. And I talked to uh, a gentleman up in Traverse City who does this on a regular basis because, uh, again, the, the, just the power of snow when it comes to insulative properties, the, the water that it supplies um, in the form of reduced irrigation, and also just the fact that it keeps their trees dormant a little longer and, and keeps the root base protected. Um, it's, it's a worthwhile thing for them to do. And so I would encourage you all to get out there and just pile up some snow around your trees if you can. So there you go, there are three reasons why I love snow. I hope you have found that you either love it more or maybe hate it a little less. And also, I wanted to remind you all that this is the last video for 2017. I will see you all in 2018. I hope that you had a very, very happy new year. Stay warm, stay safe, get out there, cover up your trees, but get inside where it's warm and just enjoy the last uh, little bit of 2017. We will see you all in 2018. 
But I wanted to leave you all with a challenge. I wanted to challenge everyone to think of 10 things that you're thankful for in 2017. I see so often times people really using the new year to focus on getting away from something that they did not like, uh, whether it be weight or a, a bad habit or, or anything. They use the new year as an excuse to, to kind of just get away from uh, something that they did not like. And I want to see people focus on the positive because if you start the year on a positive note, you know, if you're, if you're using something positive to get away from a negative, it's really kind of negative still. Think of something that happened in 2017 that you would love to carry over into 2018. Bring a, bring a good thing from 2017 into 2018. Don't take something bad and hope it gets better in 2018 because that's just, I don't know, you're just focusing on the negativity. I'd like to see less of that. So as always, I hope you all enjoyed. And if you will, please post two things you're thankful for in the comments box below. Um, it could be anything. And I would love to see what all of you are thankful for in 2017. It'd be great to see all that positivity because positivity is so contagious. And it's really what the world needs nowadays is just more positivity and optimism. And aren't, aren't gardeners the most optimistic of them all? I mean, really? <laughs> We're optimistic for the coming year. We're optimistic for uh, what's to come. And uh, even when the whole place is, is dead and desolate and covered with snow. We know that eventually spring will come. It's that positivity that I just think is so, so incredible about gardeners. So I'd love to see that put to good work and let's change the world uh, with just one positive thought. It'd be great. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay safe. Have a happy new year. We'll see you all in 2018. Hope you all enjoyed 2017. Hopefully you all learned a lot in 2017 and hopefully in 2018, we're going to get you keeping growing big or going home. All right. See you later. Bye.